Good morning, dear children. Welcome back. I am Sitara, your social science teacher. In today's session, we are going to start class seven, unit one in geography, term one, interior of the earth. This is the first video of the video series. Come, children. Let us see. Before going into today's session, let us see what are the learning objectives. That is, what are we going to learn in this unit? We will try to know about the interior of the earth. We will try to understand what, what is there inside the earth. To understand the movement of earth plates and to learn about earthquakes and volcanoes. So we learn about the interior of the earth, the movement of the earth's plate as well as about earthquakes and volcanoes. Let me give you an introduction. Our Earth is a dynamic planet, that is, it has constantly changing since it came into being. Driven by the powerful convectional cells like continents drift, giving rise to earthquakes, volcanoes and mountain ranges. We can see the Earth is covered with 1500 volcanoes, 44,000 earthquakes and maybe 170 impact craters. You'll be thinking why to learn about the interior of the earth because many phenomena like earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis are linked with the structure of earth's interior. How do you think is it possible to learn about the interior of the earth? Can we go inside and see by our eyes? No, it is difficult because it is impossible distance for humans to reach till the center of the earth. That is, the Earth's radius is approximately 6,370 kilometers. Then how do we get the information? Through mining and drilling operations, we, we are able to observe the Earth's interior. Dear children, three centuries ago, the English scientist Isaac Newton calculated from his studies of planets and force of gravity that the average density of the Earth is twice that of surface rocks and therefore the Earth's interior must be composed of much denser material. Our present information comes from the studies of paths and characteristics of earthquake waves traveling through the Earth as well as from the experiments on surface minerals and rocks at high pressure and temperature. We can also infer from the observations of surface rocks and studies of Earth's motion in solar system, its gravity, its magnetic field and flow of heat inside the Earth. We know that the planet Earth is made up of three main shells, the very thin brittle crust, the mantle and the core. Dear children, the Earth, our homeland, is a dynamic planet. It is constantly changing. The surface is constantly changing. Mountains get wear and tear. Valleys get filled up and so on. Rivers get dried up. The Earth's surface has lofty mountains, high plateaus, large plains and deep valleys etc so it is the topography is completely different in areas it, like you have lofty mountains high plateaus large plains and deep valleys the earth's surface is constantly undergoing changes inside and outside the surface is constantly getting changed, not only from the inside, but also on the outside. The outside changes we are able to visually perceive, but not what is happening inside. Have you ever wondered what lies in the interior of the earth? Have you thought, okay, what will be there inside our earth? What is the earth made up of? All these things we are going to learn. Now let us learn about the interior of the earth. Dear children, the structure of earth may be compared to that of an apple. That is, you can compare the structure of the earth to an apple. On the basis of the study of earthquake waves, the spherical earth is found to be three concentric layers. So, on the basis of study of the waves from earthquake, that is earthquake waves, the our earth, earth is spherical in shape, is found to be made of three concentric layers. 
concentric c o n c e n t r i c concentric circles are circles of different sizes but having the same center point so there are three concentric layers for the earth they are the crust mantle core what are the three layers crust mantle core crust c r u s t crust mantle m a n t l e mantle core c o r e core so the earth is made up of three concentric layers they are crust mantle and core now let us learn about the crust dear children it is the outermost solid part normally about 8 to 40 km thick and it is brittle in nature nearly 1% of earth's volume and 0.5% of earth mass are made up of crust the thickness of oceanic and continental crust are varying the oceanic crust is thinner compared to the continental crust the crust is the outermost layer of the earth the thickness varies from 5 to 30 km It is about thirty-five kilometers on the continental masses and only five kilometers on the oceanic floors. So you can see the crusts have. We are having crust two types: on continental crust as well as oceanic crust. The continental crust is thirty-five kilometers, whereas oceanic crust is only five kilometers. Despite greater thickness, the continental crust is less dense than the oceanic crust. because it is made up of both light and dense rock types the oceanic crust is composed mostly of dense rock such as basalt you can see the picture of basalt there so the oceanic crust is made up of dense rocks like basalt and the continental crust is made up of both light and dense rock types you can see the crust there which is comprised of oceanic crust and continental crust then you can find the upper and lower mantle outer core which is liquid and inner core which is solid you know children earth is called as blue planet why because 71% of the earth is covered by water dear children the crust comprises of two distinct part there are two distinct part for the crust the upper part consists of granite rocks and forms the continent it has a main mineral constituents of silica and alumina so what are the main constituents it is silica and alumina so it is referred to as cl s i a l c l it has an average density of 20 Two point seven gram per cubic centimeter. So the crust is made up of two parts. The upper parts are made of granite rocks and forms the continents. And the main mineral constituents is silica and alumina. Hence, it is called as Cl. The density is two point seven gram per centimeter cubed. Now let us see what is the lower part made of. Lower part is a continuous zone of denser basaltic rocks forming the ocean floors comprising mainly of silica and magnesium it is comprising of silica and magnesium so it is called as sima it has an average density of 3 grams per centimeter cubed the cl and sima together form the earth's crust since the cl is lighter than sima the continents can be said to be floating on a sea of dense sima so children the crust is made up of two parts the upper part mainly made of granite rocks and forms the continents and it is referred to as cl because the main mineral constituent is silica and alumina with a density of 2.7 gram per centimeter cubed the lower part forming basaltic rocks is called as sima because it is constituent of silica and magnesium with an average density of 3 g per centimeter cubed 
Since Cl is lighter than Cma, the continents can be said to be floating on a sea of dense Cma. The continents are floating on Cma. What you see on the picture is that of the structure of the earth. We have learned a little bit about the crust. I told you we have got crust is made up of two parts. One is Cl and next one is Cma. Next we will go to the mantle. We have mantle which have the upper mantle and mantle. Then outer core and inner core. Now let us go to the mantle. The next layer beneath the crust is called as a mantle. Mantles are made up of rocks or ices and generally the largest and the most massive part or massive layer of the planet. The earth's mantle is a layer of silicate rock between the crust and the outer core. Now let us learn about the mantle. The portion of the interior beyond the crust is called as mantle. The mantle is about 2900 kilometers in thickness and there is some discontinuity between them and it is called as Mohorovicic discontinuity. Dear children, the next layer beneath the crust is called as a mantle. It is separated from the crust by a boundary called as Mohorovicic discontinuity. M O H O R O V I C I C Mohorovicic discontinuity D I S C O N T I N U I T Y discontinuity. The mantle the children is about 2900 kilometers thick. It is divided into two parts that is the upper part upper mantle and the lower mantle. The upper mantle has a density of 3.4 to 4.5 gram per centimeter cubed and it extends down to 700 kilometers. The lower mantle is having a density of 4.4 to 5.5 gram per centimeter cubed and extends from 700 to 2900 kilometers. So children we have two parts for the mantle. They are upper mantle with a density of 3.4 to 4.5 and it is extending just 700 kilometers. The lower mantle is having densities 4.4 to 5.5 and it is extending from 700 kilometers to 2900 kilometers. Dear children the uppermost solid part of the mantle and the entire crust make up the lithosphere. Now let us move on to the next layer which is the innermost layer surrounding the earth's center that is a core. The core is composed mainly of iron and nickel and it is called as NIFE. The inner core is in solid state and outer core is in liquid state or semi-liquid state. Barosphere is sometimes used to refer to the core of the earth or sometimes the whole interior. So the innermost layer of the earth is called as a core. What is core? The innermost layer of the earth. It is also known as barosphere. Barosphere. B-A-R-Y-S-P-H-E-R-E. -E. What is the other name for the core? It is barosphere. It is separated from the mantle by a boundary called V chart Gutenberg discontinuity. V chart Gutenberg discontinuity. W E I C H A R T V chart Gutenberg G U T E N B E R G Gutenberg discontinuity. D I S C O N T I N U I T Y discontinuity. So two terms we have learned children. One is a Mohorovicic discontinuity which is the boundary between the crust and the mantle. This is V chart Gutenberg discontinuity. There is a boundary between the mantle and the outer core. Dear children the core again is divided into two parts. The outer core and the inner core. Dear children the earth's core is about the size of the entire planet Mars. About one third of earth mass is contained in the core which is most in liquid iron alloyed with nickel and some lighter components like sulfur, oxygen and even hydrogen. A small central part of the core is solid iron. The 
the outer core is molten and liquid iron and nickel while the inner core is solid and much more dense than either iron or nickel at the surface. Dear children, the crust forms only 1% of the volume of the earth. 84% consists of mantle and 15% makes the core. So the crust forms only just 1%. What we see on the surface is just the 1% of the volume of the earth. 84% is a mantle and 15% makes the core. Do you know children what is the radius of the earth? It is 6,371 kilometers. Dear children, the outer core which is rich in iron is in liquid state. It extends between 2,900 to 5,150 kilometers. The inner core is composed of nickel and ferrous and is in solid in state. The central core has a very high temperature and pressure. It extends from 5150 kilometers to 6370 kilometers. That's the radius of the earth. The average density of the core is 13 gram per centimeter cubed. So the outer core is in liquid state and it is running between a kilometers of 2900 to 5150. The inner core is made of nickel and ferrous and it is in solid state. The central core has very high temperature and pressure. And it runs from 5150 kilometers to 6370 kilometers. Before winding up today's session, let us have a recap of what we learned here. We learned that our Earth is a dynamic planet. On the basis of the study of earthquake waves, the spherical earth is found to be of three concentric layers, the crust, mantle and core. The crust is the outermost layer of the earth with a thickness varying from 5 to 30 kilometers. The continental crust is less denser than the oceanic crust. It is comprising of two distinct parts, the upper part called as CL, lower part called as SEMA. The layer beneath the crust is a mantle. It is again divided into upper mantle and lower mantle and it has got a thickness of 2900 kilometers. The innermost layer of the earth is called as the core or the barysphere. Core is in turn divided into outer core and inner core. The crust forms only 1% of the volume of the earth, 84% is mantle, 15% make up the core. Dear children, in the next session, we will discuss about the movements of the earth. Now it is time for worksheet. Worksheet number 1. Roman number 1. Answer in a word. Question number 1. Name the outermost layer of the earth. Name the outermost layer of the earth. Question number 2. What is CL? What is CL? Roman number 2. Answer the following briefly. Question number one. What is mantle? What is mantle? Question number two. Write a note on the core of the earth. Write a note on the core of the earth. Roman number three. Distinguish between CL and SEMA. Distinguish between CL and SEMA. As we do in the case of worksheet, Copy the questions in your rough note. Learn the answers well. Read the lesson. Then write it as home test. With that, we wind up today's session, dear children. Thank you for watching. For more videos, please visit our YouTube channel. Thank you.